Hello and welcome back to Reconnect, my weekly video stroke podcast series where I talk about all things sort of energy, shamanism, druism, psychic awareness and all things that make life exciting. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is, can I teach people how to see energy? So for those of you who don't know me, I can see lots of different forms of energy, sort of um, almost like as holographic images. Now, I've always maintained actually that it's not a psychic ability, it's a kind of sight. I think actually there is a crossover it's partly sight and partly psychic ability. And I've been looking into this all my life. And it's only really recently that I've actually found um, somebody else who has the same ability and has been doing um, research with the Institute of Noetic Sciences about this. So it's really exciting. So what he calls this ability upside. Tom Matte is the person who I've been in contact with. And he calls this ability upside. And his ability came after he was visited by a being after his um, drug addiction and I got to thinking about that because I don't remember not having this sight I say that until I really think back now my first recollection of really something admittedly I was incredibly young I was still in a cot and what happened was I woke up my brother very young brother was sleeping next to me in a bed I was still in the cot and the door of our bedroom uh, bedroom was open ajar. I could see um, um, light coming through from the upstairs landing. We were only in a small semi-detached house, but I became aware of a bright light coming from up in the far corner of the bedroom. And I turned round to have a look and it was like this tunnel of white light. So the room was the same proportions, but here came this really long tunnel of white light that was, incredibly long in distance you know and it was like that's strange because it goes farther than the much farther than the actual room and again just off the entrance to this tunnel was this being uh probably about you know two and a half feet tall um and in my childish mind and whether they look like this or not or whether that's what i was in my mind was interpreting what this being looked like was this small sort of glowing figure um, with a slightly elfish pointy ears. He had a little top on. He had blue and white stripy trousers with a big belt with a big buckle on, little pointy shoes. And he was um, carrying, writing, looking at me and writing in this book. And next to him floating was like one of those cartoon um, bottles you see in the laboratory, with this big smoking liquid in it. And he was writing, you know, busy beavering away in this book, writing these notes. And then, you know, I was watching him and then he looked up and saw me and looked a little bit surprised that I was looking at him. And I was thinking, this is really, really strange. You know, even as a kid, I thought, this is not, this is not the normal things. You know, it wasn't, it's not my exact memory because I was really young. And I try, you know, I know every time we remember something, we remember something slightly different, but the, the bizarreness of it really always stayed with me. And he sort of floated across the room at me a little bit, looking at me, and then receded. And he went back into this tunnel and started to go along this tunnel of light. And I could see him receding in the distance. And the tunnel was shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And I remember thinking, don't shut. For some reason, I really didn't want this tunnel to shut. It was as if once it was shut, it would all be gone. And um, as I was thinking that, don't shut it it sort of stayed there as this ball of light forever and you know for a long time and eventually I fell asleep um with it still in the room and when I you know woke the next morning I looked for it I couldn't see anything and that's my earliest memory of seeing something unusual but um I don't know whether it was after that or even whether slightly before but I have always seen energy as like um almost like a holographic 3D image um, made of lights and shapes and forms. So earth energy I see as very um, like a, a geomagnetic force, like a wave, but it's got symmetrical patterning in it. Um, chakras are constantly opening around people, but there is energy everywhere. And it's as if reality is literally just a veil. And then sometimes the veil opens and I can see beyond it. So 
there you know what you might other people might say well there's nothing in the gap between me and the wall to me it's full of brightly colored energy and all these kaleidoscopic patterns and it is everywhere um i can turn it off slightly because people ask me can i turn it off yes i can live with live it with it sort of muted a lot of the time and then when i want to see it all i can describe it best as is a slight shift in how I'm paying my attention or how I'm observing the world and then my eyes sort of change in focus and these these images appear and they're not just images because you can interact with these images you can engage with these images and you can change them so you can sort of manipulate these um, energetic images of things or particularly energetic patterns of things and then you can change how that thing materializes in the sort of in the 3D world. So I was, I've always, you know, you don't mess with these things. So I was thinking, well, I don't really know what I'm messing with when I see these patterns. But so the question people often ask me is, you know, can I teach them to see as if it's a mind's eye thing? And it's not a mind's eye thing. It's not in, in not in that sense. The vision isn't a psychic awareness. But I would say very much it's part of a psychic awareness. Because this visioning opens up sort of other realms, other dimensions. It makes it easy to actually project, have out-of-body experiences. It makes it easy to connect to non-human beings out there in the universe. It's literally like cutting a cutting a knife, uh, cutting, you know, making a slit in reality and opening it out. And then there are these other creatures that, you know, in other realities that we can communicate with and we can learn from and and all sorts of things, but it also means that I do have precognitive abilities. I do see things, and some of them have been really useful. I mean, one of my earliest memories, for instance, is again, I was this was not long after this had happened in reality, because when I, I know that I lived in this house for only a couple of years, and in that time, A, I saw this tunnel of light, then I started to see sort of like energy like a life force a, a, a like a light that permeates everything this pulsing light down every blade of grass every cell in your body it sort of pulsed with this electric light and I could see that everywhere and I would spend hours literally talking to the tree down the bottom of the garden about you know I'd think thoughts and answers would come back so I only lived in this house a couple of years and one of the things that happened there that really um, showed me how powerful this imaging was was I was at nursery school and I still remember it really really clearly to this day there was a big wooden slide it was this big hall area and there was a wooden slide and it was literally um, the slide and then it had some brackets and the steps just hooked into these brackets so it's literally a slide held together by by pressure and I was in the queue to go up this slide very shy child because of all the weird stuff I could see, I was really shy and I didn't like commun talking to people because I could see sort of these extra depths in their words and their thoughts. It was like being bombarded by energy all the time. So I was in the queue to this slide. And as I was watching the kids go up, I could see what was happening in real time. But then out of what was happening in real time came this slightly faster image so the child was stood on the step here, and in reality I could see them, but then this holographic image came out of these children and sped up and they went up the stairs and went up the stairs, and then somehow the brackets on the slide broke and the slide collapsed. And I was at the bottom of the stairs watching this happen, so I kept letting people go past me up the stairs, and one of the nursery school teachers was like, you know, I can remember saying, don't you wanna go up the slide? And in the end I was like, no, no, no. And then as I turned away, the slide, collapsed with these kids on the steps because at the time I didn't realize that the images that I was seeing that was the first time one of these images actually came to pass so that these things happened and it was several years later when something very similar happened I was walking down um it was a we lived in a dark down a dark country lane there was uh, my mother me and my brother some of our school friends and a couple of other adults we were walking down a road, it was dark, it was raining, it was winter. There weren't many street lights. We were approaching the street lights and there was a sharp bend in the road. Behind us, I could hear a motorbike approaching. And just as I was in front and just as we were approaching this bend, I could hear the motorbike. And all of a sudden, this holographic image of this motorbike just 
hitting the something oily on the road and sliding across the road and going straight across the pavement in front of us. And I stopped back and held, sort of held everybody up. And I was like, it, I'd seen it, but it hadn't yet happened. I was a bit shocked. But me stopping stopped everybody walking for a minute. And then as they got going again, the actual motorbike did come down the road. It hit a patch of oil and slid across the pavement exactly where I had just witnessed it. A sort of like this holographic image just a few seconds before. And if I hadn't stopped, if I'd have carried, ignored it and carried on walking, we would have been exactly on the corner of that pavement when the motorbike slid across the road. And during my lifetime, I've had so many things like that presented to me about don't pull out at this junction that's just now in the car because this is going to happen. Don't go down that road because there's going to be an accident. So a lot of them have been premonitions about um, avoiding danger and keeping me and my children safe. So there is definitely an element of precognition or psychic awareness about it. And also, you know, the fact that you can use it to see in other dimensions and connect with the beings. So there is definitely a psychic element to it. But nonetheless, it's still very much a visual property. I see it. It's not in my mind's eye. I see these holographic images out here. I can touch them. I can feel them. I can hear them. I can see them. It's, it's just another layer of reality. And I think that's what fascinates me about it is that, you know, when I talk about earth energy, people often talk about vague fields and forces. You know, I'm talking about very definite 3D things that I, I can see. That's why I'm involved in geomancy. And because earth energy is incredibly powerful and our own aura and our own chakra system and all the often stories that play around in our aura, like images, like movies about our lives, um, as we process things, a lot of these things are helped to unfold and heal in with earth energy. These energy fields are, are emitted from the earth because, you know, as a soul, as a as an as a as a being, we decided to come hand, come to earth and have this incarnate experience so that our soul as a contributing factor, you know, a, a contributing consciousness in this multidimensional universe can contribute to the universe's learning and growing in that small way. And to have that complete incarnate experience of both a physical being and an emotional being and this other side of it, you know, the earth energy enables us to hold those three states together. And that's why I think that's why I was so drawn of all the sort of spiritual disciplines I could have followed was the earth energy gave us that complete picture because earth energy nurtures our secular spaces where we live and work but it's when particular forms of earth energy come together and th uh, those that are our sacred sites that the vestiges of this ancient geomantic technology which is still visible in the sort of landscape features and old sacred spaces and temples we recognize there was this worldwide system at those spaces that a certain number of energy forms come together. And when we as a physical and an energetic being are exposed to those, we are able to achieve physical, mental, emotional, and psychological states that we can't really hard to achieve elsewhere. So place is very important. And ever since I was a young child and lived in Ireland, I can see that's what really opened me up to earth energy, actually, in, in when I lived in England as a small child, because we lived in a bit of a town, we were going into suburbia, even though, you know, had a farming family, but we also lived in the town. And then I moved to Ireland, at, you know, um, we've been holidaying there for a couple of years and I moved there at the age of nine and something shifted massively in my awareness at this living in this really remote rural landscape being surrounded by these sort of consciousness in nature and actually for a while it was quite terrifying because I could see all these strange beings around me all the time and they're sort of like archetypal forms some of them are scared the bejesus out of yeah the shape of them um sort of almost strange humanoid beings with long arms and gray figures uh, but they exist in these other dimensions not necessarily evil or bad 
but they exist in these other dimensions. Uh, and that's what really opened me up to it and opening and realizing that there are places in the earth where we can come more into contact with these beings and experience them and communicate with them. And those spaces um, are held by um, earth energy um, resonances that lessen the thinning of the walls between what we perceive as our reality and this other reality that this that this site, um, Tom Matty calls it upside, this site gives you access to. You recognize that very much that reality is really a veil. <laughs> it's barely solid at all. And um, this sight, this being able to see. And um, yeah, it's hard to describe. I can see he finds it hard to describe in his work, and I can understand that. But all he can describe is this slight change in where you focus your attention and a slight shift in your focus. And then all this other stuff appears. It's like it is like looking at a holographic image. You can look at it and say, Oh, there's a picture, and also you twist it, and then oh look, there's so much more. And it's exactly that. And yeah, I'd love to hear of anybody else who has this kind of ability. Um, and, and did you always have it? Or did you have some kind of encounter with a being? You know, I wonder whether I'd always had it or whether that being was the linchpin for setting it off um, or, or where it actually comes from. I wonder whether it's something that human beings are growing into or whether actually it's a much older ability. It's kind of a throwback perhaps to... Um, abilities that people have had in the past that perhaps made them you know sages and mystics and oracles and the ability to see because if you can see this other world if you could see these other dimensions of reality these other spaces you would never look at life the same it is um seeing this depth and how connected we are and actually how sort of narrow I mean, the human experience, you know, don't get me wrong, our human abilities, our body, our senses of sight, touch, smell, um, hearing, are you know, absolutely incredible. But we still are only able to see quite a narrow band of colours. We can hear, you know, sort of a narrow band of, of noises. There is so much we in our body are not aware of. And I think upsight gives you... Um, access to much more things on the spectrum but it's not the easiest thing to live with um so i'd love to hear from anybody else who has this ability to see things um that other people can't um because if you you know it's it's, it's quite hard to live with and although it's although it is both you know a blessing and a gift there are times when it can be really, really challenging. And it's not something that I know that I can easily turn off. So when I'm speaking to people, for instance, or, you know, just having a conversation with, inevitably, I can see the energy in their homes. Inevitably, I can see the energy in their aura. Um, and then you can see which parts of it don't look quite right or aren't quite, you know, stable. They might, they might be ill in a certain area. And that's not because I'm deliberately focusing or channeling or having this psychic ability. It's just laid there in front of me. I can't help it. I can't not see it. So I would love um, other people's insight if you have this ability to um, reach out. I'd love to have a conversation with you about it, about when it started, how you deal with it, what kind of things you get from it. Because I know through upside, it enables me to shift my awareness and I know I'm able to have out of astrally project. I can literally, you know, my astral body will be able to travel and that travels more in this world or sort of, or rather this sort of perception of reality, I would say that you're able to, you know, leave your body, look down your house, fly across the landscape um, and see other things. And then there is what I would consider probably a different kind of outer body experience where your mind exists in this completely other dimension where everything is just energetic shape and form, it's kaleidoscopic, it's fractal in nature, and you are at one with this incredible creative force that is all around you. Um, and, and, and you can get sense of other consciousnesses in there, and that's a very different experience than astral travelling. So, yeah, I just wanted to come on, because lots of people ask me about, you know, can I... Um, you know, train them to see energy as if it is some psychic ability or if it's 
um, that I, you know, that's something that people can learn. I, I don't think you can learn to have upside. I think it either is something perhaps that we were born with or for some reason we've had some encounter like my first encounter with my little the little yellow shining man in my bedroom or um, other people's encounters. I wonder if it is stimulated by encounters with these other beings, but also what lies behind that. Was it innate within us and stimulated? Was it something that happens? Is it something that happens as a byproduct of coming into contact with these beings? Something doesn't get quite get shut down again. Something shifts in our energy through being in this close proximity to, to some otherworldly creature. I don't know. So I'd love um, to hear your thoughts on this. And um, yeah, and ask, you know, ask any questions. It'd be great to hear what questions you have about it um or whether you've got you know something else that we don't know about you know it's, it'd be interesting to see because i know the institute of noetic sciences is just about to publish their first paper on this this upside so i'll be interested to see what they say about that and hopefully be involved in uh further research because i know they're looking for more people to be involved in that so hopefully at some point in time in the future so it'd be really really interesting so i look forward to reading their paper um, and I'm very grateful that I found Tom Maté to um, know that there is somebody else out there in the world with this and trying to find out more about it. What is it? How does it work? Um, and what what's the potential for for, um, you know, humanity of, of of this gift? What what can we do with it? How can we um, make the most of it? Because I make the most of it by um, utilizing it in geomancy, which is bringing people and their activities and their habitats the places that they live and work really into harmony because this energy in the earth it is like the force that animates our world it brings everything into being and then we want to have sites sacred sites or spiritual sites where different forms of earth energy happen to come together we can capitalize on that we can we can hold it in a stable frequency using construct constructions whether that be a stone circle or a cathedral you know that, that have sacred geometry in its proportions because that hold these frequency stable it's frequency stable and it is in those sites then I say that we are able to have um, expand our consciousness and have spiritual experiences or expanded awareness or altered states of consciousness that we're able to have those experiences to connect to something more than ourselves and it's the earth energy that stimulates that because it stimulates specific neurochemicals in the brain that allow us to have these experiences so there is that point where the science and magic meet that then this this the world opens up for us so it's the same as you know taking plant medicine the 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 science is that you're taking a chemical substance that creates the god particle in your brain but then having the god part in your brain enables you to have the spiritual experience and essentially that's what sacred sites do when they're fully operational unfortunately most of our um, sacred sites that you see you know they've got stone missing so they've got embankment missing so there should be water there there should be other things there so most of them aren't fully functioning when i look at the energy symbol si signatures in them and the energy structures in them there's often bits missing it's like a bicycle without the chain or with a pedal missing or with the handlebars missing they're great and we can get a sense of what it um the sort of power within them and there is still power at a lot of them, um, but it's not being utilised, obviously, in the way that it once was, because so many of these structures have decayed over time. And, of course, now they're held as ancient monuments. We, we can't manipulate them. Um, so our only alternative is to try and build new ones where we can achieve that state. Because, you know, if we had a house, if we left a house abandoned for 5,000 years and the roof fell in and everything you know, when the windows were gone and the doors were were not there. When we would go back to it, we say, we say, oh, this is a house. But it's no longer functioning as a house because it doesn't have all the things in it that make it a safe, secure home. And a lot of sacred sites are like that. They're still a sacred sites, but it's got bits missing. So it no longer functions quite as it should do. Um, stones are missing. I say water is missing. Things are missing. People are missing. Sounds are missing. Um, so there's this gap. You can see these sort of energetic patterns trying to form the bits can't link and there's holes in it 
So they're not quite as stable. So that's how I use my upside is what I'm trying to say. I use it to recognize how the energy of place could be better set up to support people in their day-to-day -day activities and in their spiritual um, growth and expansion because the two are symbiotic. They sit together um, to have a, a um, you know, a fully, fully value-filled, happy, joyful life where we fulfill our potential. We've got to do the day-to-day -day stuff that needs doing in our secular spaces. We need to do, we need to live. We've got to have a home. We want to have a family. We want to have some kind of satisfying work. We want to make sure that satisfying work really ideally comes from our soul gifts. And that's why we visit the sacred sites. What did I come here to do? What's my place in the world? What did I, what, what, how could I usefully contribute through my life to everything I see around me? And then we take that knowledge from the sacred sites and we put it into practical, actionable things in our day-to-day -day life. Um, and an upside, um, as Tom calls it, is one of the things I utilise um, to do that. So I'd love, again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on upside. I'd love to, um, if you have any questions, you know, do reach out and ask me. And um, I do also have a free masterclass coming up on the 19th, 20th and 21st of February. So, um, you know, reach out to me if you'd like that. But I'll put the link below. Um, I'll put the link below and, you know, like, subscribe and follow. Um, if you'd like to hear more videos, all things about all things um, geomancy, earth energy, shamanism, druidism and, and anything else you'd like me to talk about. Um, and I'll see you next time.